Hi everyone. Let's take a look at problem 8-4a where we're asked to compute different bad debt amounts. We're dealing with the Kettle Moraine Company and what we know is the information that you see. To the left of my mouse we've had total credit sales of a million five hundred thousand accounts receivable at the end of the year is four hundred and forty thousand and bad debts written off are thirty one thousand. Now let's see if we can work part A. Part A is the most straightforward part. It says what amount of bad debt expense will Kettle Moraine Company report if it uses the direct write-off method? Okay, with the direct write-off method we record directly to the P&L the amount of bad debt expense um, that we incurred. Okay, so in this situation to the left of my mouse they said we had thirty one thousand dollars and that's the correct entry. Uh, that's the correct answer. The entry we would record is a debit to bad debts of thirty one thousand dollars. I'll just put the entry down here. This will be this will be part A for now. Okay, and we wouldn't book it to the allowance for bad debt. Instead, um, actually, let me copy this because I don't want to retype it again. We would uh, debit or credit accounts receivable. And then every time we incurred the bad debt, we would put in, you know, the specific, the specific customer in here. Okay, but the way this problem is given to us, uh, we don't know. So what we do know is the entry we would book is uh, just a credit to accounts receivable. Okay, and I'll bold that to show that's uh, get the bold there to show that's the debits and credits on uh, Part A. Okay. Let's uh, let's now move. I'll copy part A somewhere else, and let's try it again. Only this time I want to bring back another account. So this time we'll delete here, delete here, and we'll ta tackle part B. The par answer to part A was the thirty-one thousand dollars. So we'll bold that, put it in. You've got that available to you. Okay, part B says, assume that Kettle Moraine Company decides to estimate its bad debt expense based on 3% of accounts receivable. What amount of bad debt expense will the company record if allowance for doubtful accounts has a credit balance of 3000 Okay, so we're assuming the current balance is 3000 credit, so we put that in here. Okay, and here's the rules that you need to use. This is the way it works. If you're assuming, if you're coming at it from a balance sheet direction, meaning we're going to estimate bad debts as a percentage of a balance sheet item, then we have to remember balance sheet with balance sheet. So 3% of accounts receivable says take 440,000 times 3%. We do the calculation. We say 13,200 is the balance um, we must achieve balance sheet to balance sheet. What that means is we want the allowance account which appears on the balance sheet to match the percentage of receivables which also appears on the balance sheet. So what that tells us is the ending number must be that 13,200 and now I'm going to put in zero just to get an underline here. We need to figure out how we get there and from here I think it's real easy. You know that you have to take the 13,200 minus the, B, the credit balance you had prior to making the entry, and you see that that 10,002 is the entry you need to make. So now on part B, the entry would be a debit to bad debt expense of 10,200, and a credit I'm going to copy back over. Let me indent that. A credit to the allowance account for that same amount, right? and that takes care of part B, 10,200 is the correct answer. Okay, then we say, assume the same facts as in part B except there is a 1,000 debit balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, so now, instead of that 3,000, let's delete this and delete this, we, prior to making the entry at the end of the year, we have a 1,000 debit balance, right? And we know we still need to get to thirteen thousand two hundred dollars because we're still assuming that uh, the company believes its bad debts will be equal to three percent the end of the year so now we say how do we get to there and you should know that now you need to add the thirteen to 
and you see how easy a T account makes this, right? You don't have to think it al algebraically, you can visually see it, that essentially we've got to make an entry for 14,200. Now, once I did that, because I already had put a reference or a formula in cell E25, you see the entry before you, and that's the answer to part C. So now let me put that over there so you know that that's the answer to C and there's the entry to C right there. Then on part D it says what's the weakness of the direct write-off method of reporting bad debts? Well there's two weaknesses and hopefully you see that. Now let's put that write-off of the bad debt again. If you remember on part A, uh, excuse me, let me label this the right way, part A we had a debit to bad debt expense and a credit to accounts receivable and I think we did it in the amount of the thirty-one thousand dollars okay that was our entry on part A okay well look at that the the I think you can see what the weaknesses are it, there's no matching of the expenses with the revenues we incurred a million five in credit sales but this thirty-one thousand may have uh, related to sales that occurred in 2006, 2005. We don't know, but there's no attempt to match how much of the million five sales we've had for 2007 is going to go bad in the future, and no attempt is made to record on the books of 2007 what those expenses are. Remember, accrual accounting says given the revenues, what are the expenses? It doesn't go the other way around, and for that reason, um, the allowance for doubtful counts follows that rule and it is considered a superior method of estimating bad debts rather than the direct write-off method. Um, the other weakness is that accounts receivable balance then at the end of the year is n there, no attempt is being made to state it at its net cash realizable value. We're just letting it be whatever it is um, with with no effort to made no effort being made to say okay we've got a million five on the books we know all of it uh, won't uh, won't be paid uh, why don't we reflect what we expect to be paid and under the direct uh, the direct write-off method we don't do that at all okay and that takes care of part D and uh, I hope you found this useful everyone thank you